this is going to be a little vlog. I don't usually do vlogs very often, but I kind of had a few important things come up in my life that I wanted to share with you guys, and um, I don't know, I just, I like to get your guys' advice, and I like to, you know, tell you guys what's going on in my life, and you guys have all been really supportive and kind to me, so of course I, I want to talk to you about stuff. And be real with you guys, I'm not going to sugarcoat things and always say that everything's great and perfect and, you know. I'm going to be honest, and I, I know you guys are honest with me too, so I really appreciate that. Yeah, I've had some really kind of um, big life changes coming up in, um, for me that weren't really decided or determined by me. Um, it actually happened to my husband. Um, I'm not going to go in huge detail, but he got laid off from his job um, last week just out of nowhere, out of the blue. Um, I'm not going to say where he worked or anything like that. I don't want to get him in trouble, but, um, let's just say it was very unexpected. Um, it was very just out of the blue and I don't agree with their decision whatsoever. Even from a financial standpoint, it doesn't make sense. They're going to outsource his graphic design job to other designers that will do his work for cheaper because they're going to break up the jobs and that kind of thing. But that just gets me thinking about how artists are not valued in the society that we live in. People appreciate the graphics on their makeup containers or advertisements or, you know, a piece of art on your wall, but nobody really thinks about the people that actually dedicate their lives to creating those kind of things and how scary it is to put yourself out there as an artist and try to make a living at it. It's one thing to do it as a hobby in your free time, which is great, and I, you know, I think that everybody can be creative and make things, but to actually make a living at it is completely different. I, I know firsthand, I actually have been making a living off my art since May. I decided to not try to find another summer job after I didn't get the job that I had the year before. Um, they had cutbacks and stuff at the university I, I, I go to. I usually worked on campus in the summer. I don't have as much need for dining center workers in the summer because, you know, all the students go home. Um, they don't have as many camps as they used to during the summer, so there are not as many jobs as there were last year, and I didn't get my job that I had the year before. Even Subway wouldn't hire me. I think a lot of it was that my boss wasn't working in the summer and nobody could get references from my boss, so uh, yeah, that was a little difficult. So. Um, yeah, I had to kind of figure out how to make um, make a living on my own, and my skills are very limited from the job job market standpoint. I refuse to go back to waitressing. I did that since I was about 14. Um, you can make a decent amount of money at it, but you work your butt off. You get disrespected all the time as a waitress. Um, you You work long, hard hours. I would, you know... The time you are supposed to get off is never the time you end up getting off, especially if you work a third shift type thing where it's so uncertain the kind of um, amount of people that are going to come in night to night. You never know. Sometimes you get called off your job and you have to go home without any pay. Um, so you think you're you're going to have enough to pay your bills and then it turns out that they don't even have enough work for you. So you get sent home. Or you're completely swamped and don't have enough support system to actually do your job. Like you'll be working 10, 10 table sections all by yourself, being extremely swamped, not able to do the best, the job to the best of your ability. So you don't get as good of tips from those people. You're still working really hard and nobody appreciates you. And I, I just don't want to go back to working those kind of jobs. I really, really don't. I just have a problem with the idealism of being an artist and the reality of it and how even if you go to college for being an artist, for doing fine art, for graphic design, whatever, what have you, they don't train you for the real world whatsoever when it comes to making a living at it. They train you in the conceptual side of it, they can give you skills on how to become a better artist, but they don't, at least at my university and a lot of other ones I know of, they don't give you really practical advice. Um, they say, oh, you just have to enter lots of juried shows and you know, get your stuff out there and hopefully someone will accept you, hopefully a gallery will give you a one person show or, you know, support your artwork. But it is extremely hard to get started in this industry. So many artists are struggling for the same spots on that wall, on that gallery wall as you are. So, um, as much as I would like to make a living off my fine art, like I knew that wasn't going to happen, like, 
it's a very specific audience that likes abstract and conceptual artwork, which I completely understand and respect. Um, I don't want just anyone having my paintings either. I want them to mean something to them. I don't want to sell them just because I want to pay my bills. I want people to actually care about what I'm making. It's another reason I kind of didn't stick with doing solely um, conceptual artwork like I was trained for in college. And that's why if you look at my portfolio, a lot of that stuff is conceptual artwork. It wasn't really meant to be sold. It was meant to be more of a portfolio piece for me, which is good. And it shows my, my talent as a conceptual artist. But it doesn't really give me the practical portfolio I need to get freelance jobs. So that's kind of what I've been working on this summer, building my art business. I've been doing more practical projects. I've been doing projects that I think that people would enjoy more, that would be more affordable for people. So that's how I stumbled into doing shoes and purses and accessories and stuff like that. Um, the paints are more affordable than oil paint. Um, the startup cost is cheaper. Um, I don't have to buy a $20 canvas. People either send me shoes or I find secondhand ones for like $5. It's a lot more affordable. I think people have been responding to it very well. So that's kind of where I, I decided to focus my energy and pursuing that. And, you know, I've been branding myself. I came up with the name Rogue Painter because I think it's kind of fun and catchy and it stands out. I create their mischievous artwork that's made for walking meaning you could take it with you, you can wear it on your feet, you could wear it on your back, you could, you know, use it as a purse. You'll carry the artwork with you and it becomes special because it's a part of your everyday life. So that's kind of like the idea behind um, my business and my brand that I'm, I'm creating. So I thought I'd give some advice to people that are just starting out, you know, maybe trying to think of ways to make money as artists, ways to sell things that you like to make. Um, just give you some advice and some warnings and tips because I wish I would have gotten all this advice in school um, where I've been paying thousands of dollars to get an art education. They need to have more practical classes that focus on the business side of being an artist, not just on the, you know, the aesthetic side, the conceptual side, that kind of thing. Because they're both equally important if you actually want to keep pursuing art and keep doing it as your career, not just as, you know, something you go to school for and then you know, fall back on something else, you know, because I don't think you should have to fall back on something else. If you're a serious artist and you're talented and you, you make quality work, you shouldn't have to fall, up, fall back on another job. People are going to want what you have to make. You just have to know how to market yourself. I have a mini rant on Etsy.com. Um, everybody totes Etsy is this great place where you can find handmade items that are, are beautiful, that are personal, they're not mass produced, that kind of thing. And it is a good site for that. I'm not going to sit here and say Etsy doesn't have cute stuff or great stuff. But as far as the seller is concerned, um, it's almost impossible to get a market on Etsy if you don't already have your own following of people that, that follow your work, um, your own contacts. Because if you're just starting out in the middle of nowhere, no contacts, no people interested in what you're doing, it's really easy to get lost in the sea of sellers on Etsy. Their search engine sucks, by the way. So if someone's trying to find your specific item that you're you're making, um, you type in, they type in what they're looking for, and it just pulls up the most random list of things. Like sometimes the item will match what the search request was, but a lot of times it doesn't. So it just, it's really hard to find your stuff in a sea of Etsy items and sellers. It's not that expensive to get started up on Etsy. It's about 25 cents for a listing and that does last for like six months so that is a good deal but people really only will look at your item for like the first week that you have it out because um, how they have it set up is that as people put new items up on Etsy your item gets pushed back to the very far pages of the search engine so you know, even though you have that listing for six months, if it's at the very back of the search list, uh, you know, no one's going to be able to find it. I've done advertising with Etsy. I would say it got me more views and more hearts, which means that people favorite your item, but no sales really. Um, maybe it depends on what kind of thing you're selling on Etsy. If you're selling like smaller items, maybe that would make a difference. Um, I think that the larger items, the more, um, fine art items are harder a harder sell on Etsy. People are usually looking to spend about 
probably like five dollars to twenty dollars that's kind of the range people like to shop at Etsy for don't like the fact that Etsy charges so much per, per, per transaction it's not so bad for the stuff I sell if I sell a pair of shoes on Etsy you know my fees probably anywhere from 55 to like 75 depending on what it is um, but they get a 3.7 percent of that which I guess makes sense since they ha they're a business they have to stay in business I understand that but it's a lot especially if your item is a lower priced item um, they'll be taking a large percentage of your already minimal reward and the fact that you don't sell very much on Etsy unless you're already already a popular seller and that's the thing people seem to only buy from people that have already made a ton of sales like they're unsure if they want to buy with you because you don't have a lot of sales so it's like a double-edged sword even if you have great products even if people are favoriting your items they're afraid to buy from you if you don't have a lot of sales on your site so it's really hard to get started on Etsy it's so so hard so that's why I'm not focusing as much energy on that um, I'm focusing more energy on what I can control and that is having a Facebook business page having um, promotions through my YouTube channel which you know I don't if you guys don't want to watch that stuff that's fine you can skip through that you don't have to respond to anything that I, I say regarding Rogue Painter um, this is just to help find an interested audience in what I'm doing I have gotten great responses through this site people are interested in what I'm making even if you don't want to buy something from me even if you just gave me an encouraging comment on something I'm working on it just makes my day it makes things easier since I'm working alone from my home studio it kind of gives me feedback kind of lets me know what you guys are thinking of what what you like what you don't like that really helps me out so so if you see some of my stuff I'm you know I am willing to sell to people that are on YouTube I'm not saying that that would be a bad business move on my part if I didn't want to try to sell things through YouTube if people are interested but at the same time I'm not here to pimp my stuff out I only want you to work with me if you actually like what I make um, if you don't like what I make then that's fine too it's not everybody's thing and I totally understand that and I respect that so I'm just letting you know especially since my husband lost his job I am trying to push my business a little bit harder than I have in the past um, I'm trying to get my commission schedule as full as possible um, especially with the holidays coming up it's a perfect time to order stuff for your friends and family for yourself um, and I want you guys to get on my commission commission schedule if you really like the stuff I make uh, I'll link my artwork in the down bar if you want to check out my style kind of what I do um, there's plenty of videos like my in the studio videos if you want to see some examples of stuff I am making like right now my current commission that I'm working on for Rogue Painter is this purse for my friend I'm making her a Sleeping Beauty purse and this is just the very very base layer I just started it yesterday but it's to kind of show the process like I start off with a white base layer kind of like in the text there that way whatever color I paint on top of it will show true it won't have that underlying red color underneath it so that's the process this is going to be a double-sided purse and I do charge more for double-sided I usually charge about 55 for a purse it's probably going to be about 75 but I mean think of it it's like two paintings for the price of one kind of thing it's still a really good deal and um, yeah I'm just doing a Sleeping Beauty purse for her those are going to be the fairies on the side um, and then I have the owl up there he's going to be hanging out and on the back I'm going to have Maleficent and the dragon and the but if you guys honestly have any questions for me, um, have seen my stuff, but you're not sure how to go about placing an order with me, if if you just kind of want to ask me some questions about being an artist and what it means and, and that kind of thing, like if you're a freelance artist and you just want some advice, I'm here for that too. I've been learning as I go here, so um, I might do more videos on what it means to be an artist because I know a lot of people have this idealized view of what being an artist is but the reality is it's a really tough job even even my husband who's a graphic designer you think that his job is more secure his bosses didn't really appreciate all the stuff that he did for them and don't forget my contest ends on October 21st and this is for my owl purse that I made I'll post the link to the video right here so check that out you guys just mean so much to me thanks for the support you really you've helped me kind of feel better about myself because on Etsy I just so much by myself and 
wasn't getting very much feedback and you guys just mean so much to me so thanks so much bye guys